All right. Shall we begin? It's one after five. Great. Okay. Um, this is Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Larry Parks, and I'm going to do a little blurb explaining what Watch Me Work is. Uh, before, uh, have, have has everybody been to Watch Me Work already, or there's some people who don't know what it is that we're about to do? Hey, Mo. Is everybody? I'll, I'll just do it really fast because there's a few people who are like, huh, what is this? Are we going to have to watch Susan Larry Parks work for an hour? How oh, boring. No. Um, so Watch Me Work is a show. We've been doing it for over 11 years. Usually I do it um, in the lobby, live in the lobby of the public theater um, for 11 years. And Howl Round, the public theater has been helping it happen. Howl Round came on uh, several years ago to help us live stream the event. And since this Corona lockdown thing, I figured, hey, what could be more fun than doing Watch Me Work from my home five days a week? So here we are in our second week of that. Um, I'm a writer. I write lots of different kinds of things. And um, big thanks to the Public Theater and Howl Round for helping this happen. Here's how uh, Watch Me Work works. It's a show. It's a play. We're going to make it together, like all the world's a stage. And here's what we're going to do. Um, it's going to have the first part of the play is going to be the action of the play, and we're going to create the action together. And then the second part of the play, we're going to create the dialogue, meaning you talk to me, asking me questions about your creative process. Okay, so this is an opportunity for us to work together for 20 minutes. I'll have a timer, I'll set it. And then it's an opportunity for you to ask me questions about your creative process. I said that twice. I'll say it again. You ask me questions about your creative process. Okay, we won't have uh, the bandwidth in this forum to uh, for you to read something you've written and to have me critique it. It's not about that. This is, mo this is about process where uh, we just talk about how you're working, how your work is going, any difficulties you might have, um, some difficulties that you might ha recently have overcome uh, concerning your work. And it can be any kind of work, really. Um, big ups to the people uh, in the medical profession and all the EMS people who are working very hard on all of our behalfs. If any of them are out there, uh, <laughs> thanks for everything you're doing. And everyone really who's contributing in some positive way during this very difficult time. Um, so um, what else? Uh, Audrey, is there something else that we should w mention right now? Totally. I'll let you know how you can ask some questions. Um, so if you're in the Zoom class itself, you can ask a question by clicking on the raise your hand button. Um, it should be in a participant tab on your screen. If you click on that, a pop-up should come up and you should be able to click raise your hand um, and I will see um, and I will click and unmute, unmute you when it's time to speak. Um, if you are watching the stream on how TV. Um, you can ask questions via the Public Theater Twitter or Facebook, and you can also tweet at, at WatchMeWorkSLP, hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And that's it. I'm going to be setting this timer for 20 minutes. If anybody wants to know why I use kitchen timers. We can talk about that in the question part of the show, but I'm going to set it for 20 minutes and um, we're going to, we're going to work together. Okay, here we go. One, two, and whoops. <laughs>
<laughs> Great. All we right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. <laughs> I, I just, um, it's funny. I was so focused on, um, on you guys that I set my timer and then I didn't turn it on. <laughs> So during that, I was, if any of you saw me texting, I was texting Audrey, what time is it? <laughs> anyway, it happens. Um, so, uh, so uh, yeah. You ready? I, can, I, am, I am ready. I am ready. I just had to get my, you know. Uh, All right. Um, up first, we have Monique. Monique. Hey, Monique. Oh. Are you? Hello. Okay. Hey, Monique. Hi. Hi there. Thank you so much for doing this. This has been amazing. Um, oh, thank you. So I'm, <laughs> I'm an actor primarily. Oh, I just right. started writing this year. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so far I've written two short plays oh. and I did a part of an online devised play okay. a few weeks ago once quarantine started. Um, my question is I'm, have some other ideas for a full length play. And I'm just having trouble sort of expanding my work, if that makes sense. Like the, the other plays I did, they were by design short. They were um, for submissions for upcoming festivals and things like that. Um, so I kind of just had an idea, knew I had to keep it really compact, but now I'm sort of wondering how do I take my next idea and you know, do 60 pages instead of 10. Right, yeah. right, that's a great question. Um, um, so uh, how did you, you know, you said you've written these short plays. How did you decide mm -hmm. that they were gonna stay, you know? Short? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, as I said, I, I, I wrote them for specific reasons. It was more that I, saw um, submission opportunity and thought, oh, since I want to start writing, doing a short play seems like a good place to start. Right. So then I kind of got an idea, expanded on it. And I guess since I knew ahead of time that it had to be short, I didn't, right. uh, I didn't right. uh, let it run away with me too right. much. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So now you want it to run away with you. Now you're going to write. Yes. Okay. So let's think of like, do you know the play um, Hamlet? Have you ever, you know? Oh Hamlet? yeah. Okay, well, you're okay. I'm just, you know, you people, you know. People. Well, no, high school. It was standard. There you go. <laughs> Hamlet. Okay. So, right. So, Hamlet, right. And most of us know Hamlet, Shakespeare's Hamlet. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Hamlet, it could be like Hamlet comes home, Horatio goes, Yo, we saw your father's ghost. Hamlet could go, That motherfucker, my uncle killed him. I'm going to stab his ass. Boom. <laughs> At the end. Right. It could be that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So instead of that, it could be that, and that could be very interesting. That could be your short play, right? And then instead of that, the writer Shakespeare, he goes, well, what if Hamlet wasn't sure? Oh, that's interesting. You see what I mean? So he starts to ask, I mean, I don't know, you know, what he did to write that play, but sure. we can pretend to know. But I see where you're going. <laughs> yeah. So what if one of your characters wasn't sure? You know, what if, what if, uh, what if, um, okay, they want to go to, they want to go uh, to Coney Island, right? But mm -hmm. what if they don't have any money to get there. So you start asking what if, right? You start introducing um, complexity, roadblocks, if you will, things that your character mm -hmm. has to deal with. So um, we could say that geometry says this, the, quickest, uh, no, the, the shortest link between two points is a straight line, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a, a short play, right? There's, 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 there's less complexity. But when you have a circuitous route where your characters are going, well, what if I go in that door over there? What if I have to make money to get to where I'm going? I have to get a job. What if I don't have a job? Then I have to buy, you see what I mean? Just start yes. introducing complexity and see if That's that expands it. And again, you want it to feel, you don't want to just fill up pages for the sake of filling up pages, yeah. right? So you want it, Sam Shepard had this great essay uh, years ago 
um, the playwright Sam Shepard, uh, he wrote an essay called, I think it was called Time, when he talked about, you know, to paraphrase horribly, a, a, play, a play should be just as long as it needs to be and no longer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to, you know, you don't want to stuff your play with unnecessary twists and turns just to make it longer. You want the changes, if you will, like musical changes to organically come out of the situation, right? Like say Jane wants to marry, you know, uh, Isabel, right? Mm -hmm. Great. They're both single, they're both available, boom, it happens, great. But what if Isabel is going out with, you know, you know, Frank or something? Then it gets mm -hmm. it a little more complicated. Okay? Yeah, no, that's- okay. It might be a fun exercise point. to take some of your favorite plays and just go, this is a full length play, simplify it down and then see the complexities that the writer observed along her path as she wrote the play. You know? That's a really good idea. Oh, thank you. That's thank you so idea. much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Great question, Monique. Thank you, Monique. All right. Up next, we have, oh, so sorry. I scrolled to the wrong part. Um, Devon, hold on one second. Are you unmuted, Devon? I am. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Um, hello. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well today. Um, so I am a college student, actually, um, and I was wondering if you had any insight or, like, wanted to talk about your writing experiences throughout college and how the, or, like, the earliest, like, formative part of your writing days and, like, how those might have informed, like, where you are now. Like, how do you, right. like, how do you see that lineage from where you started right. to where you are now? Right. So here's where we do some gymnastics. Ready, Devon? Mm -hmm. So because... This is about you. Uh -huh. So what I'm going to do, we're going to make it about you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is ask you, how are your writing classes going so far? And mm -hmm. how do you see a connection between the writing classes that you've taken and the writer that you are now? Uh, yeah, I do. I, so I've taken a couple playwriting classes mm -hmm. um, and extracurricularly, like I do poetry workshops and like, oh, cool. um, different varieties of things and I do think that they like have informed my like writing practice so to speak now even mm -hmm. though like it still feels a bit preemptive to say that like I'm a playwright or like I have an artistic practice because I don't even know if I do yet um but yeah I do think that like my writing courses have been helpful but I also mm -hmm. think that now that I'm starting to like write more outside of those classes I'm mm -hmm. figuring out a way of like how do I use those materials that came from that class and the things that I want to be writing like for years to come. Like, do those things right. just get put on the back burner? Do, are those the things that you start like, working from? You mean the, do you mean the pieces that you've started in those classes? Yeah, like for example, like one class you're supposed to write like a one act play and like mm -hmm. that was interesting, but that work doesn't necessarily look like what I want to keep doing. So like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so you just keep going. I mean, the, the thing is that good writing classes, good classes, good interactions are gonna give you tools, right? Tools, yeah. uh, a friend of mine says tools, not rules. So they're gonna give you tools. So you're gonna have at the end of each class or each interaction, a series of tools for your tool belt that you can use to, I mean, if I gave you a hammer and a saw and a bucket of nails, right? Mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't say like, and you have to build a diving board every time you go to work. Right? No, you're like, yeah, I don't want to build a diving board every time. Right. I want a diving board today. I want to build a seesaw tomorrow. I want to build a park bench the mm -hmm. next day. Right? I mean, yeah. or whatever. Right? So the tools we give you are going to help you do what you want to do. Right. You can yeah. either take a short work and expand upon it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what Monique uh, earlier is going right. to kind of take a short work and kind of, or you can say, wow, I really kind of, I like it's, this is kind of the work I like to do. Maybe I'll just pick a whole new topic and apply that skill set that I learned, those tools to a new piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, we all know those of us who did any kind of formative education that you, you're getting a great education right now in college. And in a lot of people's experience, once you graduate, is when the learning really starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like a whole new, you know, level of, of uh, working because you're out in the world and working. So the idea is to, and you said you don't know what kind of writer you are yet or if you are one because you don't have a practice. Showing up every day is a practice. 
So try to do that as much as you mm -hmm. can, you know, not to yeah. chastise yourself if you don't show up every day, but try to show up every day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to Robert. All right. Next up, we have um, Vincent. Vincent, are you unmuted? I am. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, thank you for taking the time for my question. Um, I'll try to simplify it so I don't give you all the, the baggage background. But um, basically, I've been working on a play for um, the last couple of years that just recently, um, through mutual friends and a theater company that they have, we've started to do readings of it. So I've gotten okay. to hear it a couple of times. Um, and we just did a, there was a reading in February that we had our first invited audience for. And I sat down with um, one of my old writing teachers who got to go and got some notes from her and I've talked to the director and I have a lot of good information. Um, I feel like I'm excited about the rewriting process. This is like whatever draft this is at this point, but there's part of me that also is struggling with um, if I've lost like the initial impulse of what, I, like the reason why I started writing this to begin with and trying to be okay with like, okay, the journey, obviously, you know, it's gonna take you somewhere. It's not always gonna be the place you started from. But I think in all the notes that I've gotten, I'm like, that's cool, yeah, that works. I, that sounds really nice. But then there's always that like part of my brain that's like, but was was that the initial, um, you know, was that the thing that really was exciting for me about it? And, and just curious how you address if, when you're working on plays or when you're working on revising, if you ever feel like you've lost that excitement about what the initial idea was and how you how you find your way back to like, oh, that was the nugget that I was starting from. Um, and now here's here's my way back into it as I allow it to morph and change. That's a great question, Vincent. And I think a lot of us have that sort of experience. Um, in my experience, I get more excited about the thing I have than the thing I thought I was going to have when I started writing however many years ago. Mm -hmm. back there right you know what i mean so i so in my experience um i'm like wow look i have something and it's growing yay i, I and i and that sort of obscures what i thought i was going to be doing when i started um but it sounds like you might have a, a, a sort of feelings of maybe not regret but concern i mean it sounds like you're getting great notes but you might have a little concern like this isn't what i wanted to write is it am i hearing you correctly or i think that might be it and i think the other part of it for me too is that it's um i was doing a lot more like experimental writing for lack of a better word non-traditional kind of theater playwriting mm -hmm. and this play came out in a little bit more of a traditional way mm -hmm. and i had a draft where i was like i'm gonna blow this up and do the experimental version and then i <laughs> showed it to the director and he's like yeah i don't think we need all that that's maybe maybe like for this reading we don't need that stuff in there and i said all right i know it you know, let me try it and stick with what he's saying and, and keep digging into it. So I think maybe there's that part of it for me too. I'm like, oh my God, it's too, you know, this is sort of, I'm not challenging myself or it's too dull, I guess, is my fear. I don't know. So I think there's that part of it too. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And sometimes it's it's confusing when we, <clears throat> we grow and change as artists, you know? Yeah, I right. Mean, our work when we're, uh, you know, 15 doesn't resemble our work when we're, 20 or 30 or 50 or 80 or whatever, you know? I mean, there are artists who are the same all the way through. I worked with one of them years ago in the middle of rehearsal. Uh, I said, well, why are we doing that that way? He was a director, he's a director. And he shouted, I've been doing it this way for 30 years. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, that's his style, right? right. Those of us who, who, who do it the same way for for our whole career, you know? Um, and there are those of us who are not like that. So we grow and change and we have growing pains. And we say, is this really me? Or was that really me? Who am I? You know what I mean? Right. So it sounds like there's something of that in what you're experiencing right now. Um, is there a, 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 like a, a deadline or a finish line? Are these collaborators, wonderful collaborators of yours? Are they saying it needs, to, I need a new draft by such and such? Uh, right now it's been sort of loose where um, 
where I left it was, okay, with the notes I have, I'm gonna sort of beat out the moments, talk about the new scenes and then address it and then sort of write out the next draft. And they wanna, I think they're, we're aiming to produce it, hopefully, you know, who knows what's gonna happen, but in the right. fall. Um, right. So that's sort of the loose deadline. Right. Um, it's tricky. I mean, I, I would sit and like have a conversation with the play you know what I mean? Like, what is it that you really wanted to do? But it might be one of those, it might be you changing into a different kind of writer. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the tricky thing is, is that right now, um, if they're planning to produce it in the fall, you, you're kind of in a relationship with these wonderful people. You know, they right. sort of signed on to what you're writing. So right. if you decide now to go and do something else, you sort of, aren't really, you know, we're working in the spirit of the collaboration that you have agreed to thus far. Right. Um, and so while you might, you can certainly write two draft, two kinds of the play, write the way far out there play and the less far out there play. <laughs> you could, you right. know, or you could just say, I'm going to write this like this. Right. Um, I'm going to write it like, I'm going to talk to the play and make sure it's okay with the play that we're going in this direction. Mm -hmm. And we're going to write it in the direction that we've agreed to, you know? Right. You know what I mean? It, 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 maybe it's like dating. You go, well, I'm, I'm not single anymore. Oh, no. Who <laughs> am I? You know what I mean? Or I'm a parent. I'm a mom. I'm a, yeah. You know what I mean? And right. there, there might be a lot of that. I, I don't know. But I do know that you have made a, an agreement with some people who I sounds like you, you like. I do, yeah. I think they've been very, uh, I mean, they've been very generous to me with their time and, and continuing to hold these readings and then the invited read. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a really, their whole company is about creating new work. So it's been very supportive. Uh, right. I think my fear is like, oh, I'm gonna disappoint them because the, the, the sort of initial part for me was maybe something else and but I'm conforming to their idea to, to please them I, that's maybe that's misrepresenting it because yeah. it's not totally like I'm only just doing their notes I think it has been a good dialogue but yeah feeling just a little bit like in that weird blase place about mm -hmm, it like mm -hmm. how do you how do you move through it and maybe it's just you do it and move through it I think yeah I think you 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 because you you appreciate the collaboration if it didn't feel good right if it didn't feel good, then I'd say, get out, yeah. you know, like that. But it, it feels, it feels pretty good. So you go with it and maybe along the way you, you maybe your next play is just very different. Sure. You know what I mean? And, and, and either back to the style that you used to have or a combination of the two, you know? Um, I mean, my style has changed up a lot. I don't really sweat it too much. Sure. I'm just like, oh, here I am today, <laughs> writing like that, <laughs> you know? People That's have great. accused me of doing all sorts of evil, selling out, <laughs> pandering to the man. I'm like, fuck, I'm just writing, yo, right? right. I mean, I'm, I, I grow and change. I don't, I'm not one of those people who is deliberately staying the same throughout her career. I, everything I write is different. Cool. And that's just me, but you know, it's, it also feels right as I'm writing it. I don't feel like I'm being pressured to write a certain thing, even in, in work for hire. Mm-hmm. I don't feel, I mean, I feel slightly constricted because of the medium and the form and all the money that's involved, but um, it still feels like something I want to do. Right. Maybe because I pour everything I've got into it. Mm. I you think know? that could be perhaps part of it is withholding something. Like, let me just get over the fear of like, it's too, it's too anything and stop putting two on it and just say, it is what it is. It's What's the... Yeah, right. it's, it's yours. Right. It's yours. And and maybe this one is different than your other ones. Sure. It's okay. And if anybody ca calls you, you know, oh, you sold out. Say, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> I wrote this fucking thing. It came out of me and I'm doing the best I can under the circumstances. You know, you know, a lot of people like will want to lay that on you. We knew you win. You were, you know. Mm -hmm poor and you know ripped stockings living downtown with no food you know i mean 
I appreciate that. Okay. That's, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we're your squad. We support you in all your changes. You know what I'm saying? Thank we you. And all your changes. I mean, I'm, I got to say this. This is my soapbox thing. And this is not, Vincent, what you're talking about. But if in this culture we can, we, we, we lambast and we get on artists for selling out, for being different and different artists than they were last year, but, a, but we're welcoming to people who might want to change gender. Mm-hmm. Right, we have to be open and welcome, and to ourselves, we have to allow some of that generosity for ourselves. Right. This is who I am. This feels honest to me right now. You know? Okay, that's my. Thank soap. you I'm so much. My, I'm gonna get off my soapbox though. Thank you so me. much. That's okay. wonderful. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, that. Vincent. All right. Um, next, we have Emmanuel. Emmanuel, are you unmuted? Thank you so much. Uh, I can't hear you so good. Oh, you can't hear me? Uh, oh, there, better, 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 better. Go. Better? Okay, I'll just speak really close. Um, so thank you very much for doing this. It's been amazing. Um, so I am writing a musical and I've had a first reading. And the main, so I love all the characters but the main character, so the, the feedback is that we don't like her. <laughs> and then I realized I don't like her. <laughs> um, the story, fe- like it feels quite organic. It felt like that's just the story and that's just the way it is. And I was just wondering, my question was, how do you make a character more likable? Is it, I mean... Yes, I like all the other characters with all their faults and quirks and everything like that. I like them. And I think that means that they come across as likable. I mean, I'm just, I'm speculating. I don't know. Um, And her, the main character, like everything happens to her, I guess. And so we don't necessarily, yeah, I I don't, yeah, I I don't like her very much. I like her, but I don't like her. (laughs) I mean, she is what she is but I don't know how to make her likable. That's a hard note to get. Your character's unlikable. <laughs> yeah, that's a really I know. Hard, that's a really, that's a, that's a, um, mm-hmm. I find it um, a, a, tr- a tricky note and a note that can um, uh, make it difficult to know what to do. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, Cause we don't want to turn all her frowns, you know, all her frowns upside down. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's smiling all the time. Now she's happy and she, gives cookies to people and so she's likable. I mean, that's horrible. Um, But maybe what the note might mean is that we understand, maybe your your readers are not fully understanding why she does what she does. Yeah, I think that- that Okay, so yeah, so um, for example, another Shakespeare, like Richard III, you know, he goes and kills a lot of people and people go, okay, he's not likable, right? But we have a sense that we, we, we feel him. You know? He feels disenfranchised or out of the loop or made fun of. So he has the, these feelings and ang- this anger, maybe. I'm, you know, I'm not a Shakespeare scholar, but do you know what I mean? So maybe you need to ground her actions. You also said a lot of things happen to her, which is tricky. So you need to activate her, have her do things to get what she wants, right? And to ground everything she does in something that is, well, that is grounded. You have to really uh, tie everything she does to a real need that she has. Does that make sense? I, I, don't, yeah. know if, I don't know if that would make her more likable, but it certainly will help the audience or your readers wrap their heads around why she is doing the things that she is doing. Maybe the tricky thing is because the idea is that it's the outside pressures that are making her do what she's doing. Okay. That that she's pressured into this way of being and that she thinks, she thinks it's her idea, but it's not her idea. It's what society's told us, what her parents have told her. It's what everyone. And so she's, acting thinking that it's 
what she wants, but it's absolutely not what she wants. Right. So activate her, make it a real choice. Give her some real choices to do real things, to get what she really wants. See, I mean, people will follow anybody. Look at who's the president. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, give her some real, no, I mean, that's off the topic, but give her some, <laughs> give her some, she wants X. She really wants that. She's going to go for it like nothing else. You know, do you understand? If you made her passive, it's, a, it's maybe they, she just doesn't have enough energy behind her. Okay, see, see if that works. Do it a scene at a time also. You know, or you can have cards and kind of you work with index cards and, and do some, some basic outlining and sort of starting to feel her. You need to really focus on, you probably focused on all the other characters, which we often do. And then we focus on the main character sometimes last. It's okay, now it's time to, to really focus on her and her journey. We can't hear you anymore. Are you saying anything? Oh, I said, thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> thank you for repeating that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, no worries. Um, all right, next we have Anna. Anna, are you unmuted? Uh, yes. We hear you. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for this. I had a question about tempo rhythm. Um, I do dance theater. So the text is happening in between movements. All right, am I back? I have the, I'm in Mississippi, we have bad connection. Um, so I'm wondering about how you build momentum with your characters and how you use tempo inside of dialogue. Anna, it's tricky for me to hear you. I said, I think you said you do dance, uh, 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 theater pieces with choreography. Is that correct? I, I can hardly hear you. Um, oh, she's repeating. Uh, she's repeat. I think I think I get it. You you do um, theater pieces with dance in them. Is that correct? Maybe. Did anybody else hear her? Um, and how do we how do we work on putting dialogue within the movement? Uh, but I'm not sure if that is your question. So I'd hate to answer a question if it's not yours. Yes. Yes, I think. Yes, I'm looking for your. Hey Anna, maybe you can log out and log back in, and we can we can try this again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. Um, we've got about seven minutes left. Do we want to do one more and then hop back to yeah. Anna? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Great. Um, all right. Next is Saida. Are you unmuted? Uh, I think so. Of your characters dialogue. Hello? Hi, can you hear us now? I think we were getting a delay maybe from Anna's question from Hi. before. Great, okay, go ahead. I know it won't work. Okay. Saida, you're on mute. Well, okay. How about there you now? Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. thank okay. you. Yeah. I, how are you? I had a specific question. I'm a, I'm a 27 year plus uh, English and drama teacher on the high school level. I'm trying to leave some of the English alone and move more into the drama. Um, I started writing a one woman show 
And I'm just really interested in any specific instructions like a la Sarah Jones or Anna DeVere Smith, just writing for yourself, um, the, the creation of characters that you then feel you can play. Um, if there's any specific uh, references or things that you would point me to in terms of continuing. I wanna do about 12 different stories of uh, women of color throughout the diaspora. And it's just, I don't want it to all seem so vignette and just people telling their story over and over again, um, but really to give some life and breath to the characters and maybe show how um, women of color connect throughout the diaspora. Right. So you have your, your subjects, right? Mm -hmm. You have your subjects. And yes. I mean, you, you mentioned uh, Anna DeVere Smith. Great, you know, to, to look toward her. Oh, of course, you know, in Tazaki Shange for Colored Girls and, you know, yes. that kind of beautiful work that has different stories from different women or different people, you know. Um, um, it's okay if it starts to be vignette. I mean, the thing that the thing that the thing uh, that links the stories together is that they're all searching for something, if you will. Or with Anna's mm -hmm. pieces, you know, she's working through something, or she she chooses a particular community or a particular uh, subject. You know, mm -hmm. so I think I think you just write them. Like, think of your your subjects. You know this person, that person, the other person, I mean, they're, are they fictionalized or are they real? Um, um, they're all fictionalized and they're all talking about insidious racism and how we all function with white supremacy. Great, great. So, I mean, where, do you know, um, are they all in the same place? No, they are actually, I'm, I'm here in the Caribbean and mm -hmm. some of them are African-American, some mm -hmm. of them are Caribbean and mm -hmm. some of them are from the continent. Right, okay. So I'm so learning the... accents and doing that uh -huh. in terms oh, of my, my, my acting, but in terms of my writing, I didn't want, you know, people, I didn't want to feel very preachy and overwhelming. I still wanted to see beauty, even though I'm taking on the animal that is racism. Right, so yeah, so I, th I think, I mean, I think you're really there. You, do you have a writing schedule? Um, well, now, thanks to you. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I, I mean, now that I'm just teaching remotely as well, it just gives me more time with my own children and with my own writing. So, mm -hmm. good. I mean, I've, I've taken this COVID as a gift, you know. Good. Right. Well, good. Good. So you have a writing schedule, right? Yes. Um, so you do a little bit on it every day. Yes. You, I, I would suggest doing one character at a time. So maybe you have a list of all the characters you'd like to eventually get to, but you mm -hmm. choose one uh, woman at a time, right? Mm -hmm. And even if you write her, one of her monologues, if you will, um, mm -hmm. just imagine what it is, at, at first draft, and then go to the next one. So get a first draft of everybody's monologue. Mm -hmm. And it might be obvious, but to, to get away from that preachy, thing even though you're tackling big subjects you remember that first and foremost these people are people mm -hmm. so we're i'm going to be more interested in the details and specifics of their lives than them telling me although this is not what you're saying but them telling me racism is some bullshit yeah that's you know right because I mean? we could do yeah, that yeah, in yeah. like you know five words right right okay? right so I want to, you know, think of for color girls. I mean, it was, it, it told us a lot of things, but yes. it's there in, in, in so many different ways. And you mm -hmm. want to just keep coming. Uh, and, and maybe someone, one of them, two of them, 12 of them are not talking about racism. Right. Maybe they're just but, talking but about. Just, yeah. they're, they're, they're not specifically saying like, this is what racism is, this is how it affects me. But I want the thread with all of them, you know, the way in which, you know, it's a strange bedfellow and mm -hmm. how it impacts all of their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Just remember they're people and get into them as people. Okay. And what they're doing, what their day to day is like. Okay. Right. And what stories they have to tell you. Right. Right. And, 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 and then sort of see if you can see common threads 
common themes emerging as you go along and you'll think of how to but get a first draft of each one of these characters. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm almost there with that. Right. So I love great. that. Great. Yeah. Great. 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 Thank I, you. I think it's, it sounds like it's going to be beautiful. Well, you know, you can only try. That's <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. Awesome. Thank okay. you. Is Anna um, back? So I've got Anna. She typed out her question to me. Oh. So read it out loud. Yay. Um, she said she's looking for guidance on building momentum in dialogue. How do you deal with tempo and speed of dialogue between characters and action? Right. Oh, gee, that's a hard question. That's a hard question, Anna. No, but a really good question. Um, but is it true? Did she say something about how she has dance in her pieces or was that just a... I, no. she does. She's yes. nodding yes, yeah. She's mm -hmm. okay. okay, so how do we deal with tempo and say it again, Audrey, please? She said, uh, building momentum in dialogue and how do you deal with tempo and speed of dialogue between characters and action? Right, right. Um, so desire, Anna, and stakes are really, really helpful, okay? So if I want like, I want a pie for dinner really badly, I might be moved to run out to the store and get it, right? I mean, but, but, I might not be moved to run out to the store and get it because Cuomo, well, I'm in New York City, you know, they said don't go outside today, right? So it's gonna, what I'm saying is that how much your character wants something and how many obstacles they have between them and the thing they want. That's one way. Um, speed is also accomplished in dialogue. Speed is also accomplished after we've written a first draft or a second draft or whatever in trimming away the stuff that's unnecessary. But that's later. That's the second or third draft, right? So we don't want to really worry about getting the tempo just right in a first or second draft. We want to allow ourselves to have a little fluff, to have a little fat, to not know all the answers right away. Okay? And as much as you can, um, you're, you're, are you a, a choreographer also? Is that what you said? No, am I just making that up? No, you're a dancer, you do move. No, I'm just making all this up. Y yes, is that a thumbs up? No, that's a thumbs up. <laughs> yes, okay, it, um, great, I got it. So you're a choreographer, you move, okay. So as much as you can, when you write something, Anna, a page or two of dialogue or whatever, stand up and even by yourself, say you got no friends in your self, isolating or whatever you can take your your script your thing and read it out loud and when you start reading your work out loud you're going to feel what doesn't need to be there right and what might you might need to add so it's just a, so again it's about the urgency being really clear on what the stakes are and what the scene is about you know that scene with, again, with Hamlet and Hamlet's ghost, you know? Dang, man, we saw the ghost of your father. Oh shit, what are you gonna do? I don't know, right? I mean, just be really clear on what the scene is about, okay? That'll help you trim away the excess. That'll help you with speed, all right? And read it aloud for yourself. It doesn't have to be a play for you to read it aloud. It can be a screenplay, a teleplay, a, 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 a novel, whatever. You can read it aloud to feel the language Language is a physical act. It should run through your body. It's not just something that happens between the top of your head and your shoulders, right? It's not a neck up kind of thing. It's a physical thing. And you should be able to move, your, your language should move you. I mean, I keep, I mentioned Shakespeare like 10 times today, but that's one of the things that's really great about his work, that it moves you to do things, you know? You can feel the movement in the lines, which is very exciting, okay? So get in your body or get to stay in your body because you're in your body already. You're a dancer. Well, it is 604. It's 604. Okay. Should we come back tomorrow? We'll come back tomorrow. Let's come back tomorrow. <laughs> Amazing. Um, as a reminder, if you want to sign up for a class, it's at publictheater.org uh, by 3 p.m. each day and you'll get a link for the Zoom and we'll release next week's link on Friday at 3. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Keep washing your hands.